then I wanted to come on really quickly and do a little introduction to this video so you knew what you were watching. I've been over on Instagram and in my Instagram stories sharing just some highlights and takeaways from the book that I'm reading called Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges. And I know that a lot of you that follow me over here on YouTube are not on Instagram. So I thought I would share some of those takeaways with you here. So please be aware that these are literally 15 second clips that have been downloaded to my phone and now edited into this video. But hopefully um, it'll be helpful to you. It's It's been a great book. So here you go. Some of my highlights from Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges. All right, this book, Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges, has been such a good read. I'm, I think, on chapter eight or nine, and there's just so many things that um, I think are beneficial for all of us. And so um, what I want to do over the next couple weeks as I'm reading through the book is share with you some of my takeaways from the book, and I'll try to save them in the highlights. Um, I'm hoping that you'll be encouraged by some of those takeaways that I share with you, but also I'm hoping that you will be inspired to pick up the book and read it for yourself. And maybe if you don't want to start with Respectable Sins, Jerry Bridges has a lot of other excellent books. I highly recommend Trusting God. Um, it is great for this kind of season that we're in with so much uncertainty in the world. Maybe you're just feeling really worried and anxious about events. Trusting God is excellent. So what is Respectable Sins all about? Well, it is for us as Christians who sometimes neglect to address those subtle or respectable sins in our life because we're so focused on the big sins of other people. We think, I haven't committed murder, I haven't committed adultery, I haven't stolen anything, so I'm doing pretty good. And yet, we neglect some of those subtle or respectable sins such as gossip, selfishness, um, being easily angered, uh, frustration and anxiety, all those things that we kind of think, well, those are okay, they're not that bad. But the truth is, sin is sin, and it is it dishonors God. And so as Christians, we want to be dealing with all of our sin so that we can become more like Christ and so that we can glorify God. All right, I'm going to share with you my first takeaway from the book, and this is from the chapter um, called Ungodliness. And I have to say that when I was reading through the chapter headings, this was one that I thought, I don't really think I have an issue with ungodliness. Like, I'm, I'm pretty much do, I mean, I read my Bible and I try to be obedient to the Lord, so this really probably isn't going to change me maybe as much as some of the other ones. But boy, was I mistaken. Let me read to you um, just a few different sections of the book on just how he defines ungodliness. And just by the definition alone, can I just say convicting? All right, I'm going to read just um, a short excerpt from the book here in the chapter on ungodliness. He writes, Contrary to what we normally think, ungodliness and wickedness are not the same. A person may be a nice, respectable citizen and still be an ungodly person. Open the page here. He goes on to write, Ungodliness may be defined as living one's everyday life with little or no thought of God, or of God's will, or of God's glory, or of one's dependence on God. You can readily see then that someone can lead a respectable life and still be ungodly in the sense that God is essentially irrelevant in his or her life. You guys, I don't know about you, but how many times in the day, how many days in the week, how many weeks in a month do I sometimes neglect to acknowledge God? And so as I read that, it was very convicting and encouraging because it made me realize that on any given day, yes, I am sinning by being ungodly because I'm not thinking on God. I am not seeking his will. I am not being dependent on him, especially in the craziness of homeschooling. Sometimes my mindset isn't, oh God, what's your will for me right now? It is, let me manage my kids. Let me get them quiet. Let's get this schoolwork done. Instead of thinking, what is God's will for me right now? Maybe it's to grow in my patience. Maybe it's for me to learn how to be slow to anger, to be better at that. 
And so it was encouraging because I could go through that list though and say, but this is how I could be godly with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. We can't do that on our own. But this is how I could be more godly, to be thinking on God, to be um, constantly asking, what is his will for me? To be dependent on him. The third thing that I wanted to hop on here and talk about is another takeaway from another chapter in the Respectable Sins book by Jerry Bridges. This takeaway is from chapter eight, all about anxiety and frustration. And I wanted to share two things. One is that he points out, hence the title of the book, Respectable Sins, that anxiety is a sin. And it's a sin for two reasons. And he explains them more in detail in the book. But the two reasons that he points out is one, that anxiety is a distrust in God. We're not trusting God with different situations in our life. And the second reason that anxiety is a sin is he says it's a lack of acceptance of God's providence or sovereignty in our lives. We're not trusting in God's sovereignty and that he's working all things for our good. The second takeaway is a quote from Jerry Bridges in this chapter about what we should do if we are feeling anxious. So that will be in the next slide. I wanted to come on here and share another takeaway from Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges. This is from the chapter on pride. And one of the things that I really um, appreciated in this chapter is that Jerry Bridges broke down um, and explained the four most common types of pride that we deal with as Christians. So pride manifests itself in lots of different ways, but there's four common ones that as Christians, we particularly struggle with. And so he broke those down and he explained them and I found, found that to be very helpful and a little convicting. So what I did in the next slide, um, I'm gonna write out what those four categories of pride are with a little description and hopefully that will be helpful for you. All of those takeaways are from the first half of the book. The second half of the book is excellent as well. I just didn't get around to sharing about them over on my Instagram stories. This is a great book, especially if you're looking for a group study to do with some friends or in a Bible study. It has a study guide at the end, which makes it really easy to use in a group setting. So if you're looking for a book to help grow you in your walk with the Lord, I encourage you to check out Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges.